As it had been already mentioned on many occasions, war is not only a confrontation between armies, but is also a competition of transport systems. Even a small number of troops consume a huge amount of various supplies, and even a well-trained regiment will quickly lose its combat capacity and effectiveness without the timely supply of provision. In July 2014, the cutoff of supply lines of military weaponry forced the leader of the Russian-backed militants and ex-general of the Russian Federal Security Service Igor Gherkin to leave Slavyansk without a fight. The shortage of fuel and ammunition prevented Ukrainian forces from maintaining control over the state border in August of last year. As a result, the warfare became a struggle to get control of roads. You are watching the 83rd episode of the program about ATO – History of the War. In the spring of 2014, the Russian Federation annexed Crimea and subsequently in the summer of the same year it invaded east of Ukraine. As a result of the chain of battles, soldiers of the Ukrainian army managed to repel the attacking forces, but the war did not end. Diplomacy and espionage, economics, propaganda and combat are all elements of a hybrid war, and we are constantly trying to get to the bottom of this. On February 13, the vicinities of the city of Donetsk and the provincial town of Horlivka became the epicenter of the confrontation in eastern Ukraine. The Russian-backed militants used the entire range of small arms on the outskirts of Opitnev, Divka and Piski. In Zaitseva and Mayorsk, the militants launched several mortar strikes. In their attempt to avoid the artillery attack of the Ukrainian armed forces, the militants fired in these directions synchronously. The activity of Russian-backed militants has slightly decreased in the area of Marienka and Krasnohorivka. The militants of the so-called 5th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade of the Donetsk People's Republic fired mortars and small arms in this area. Despite this, the Marienka checkpoint was outside the combat zone and was open for crossing the demarcation line. Ukrainian positions in the area of Talakivka, Pavlopil and Shirokina were also under mortar fire. In total, within one day, seven Ukrainian soldiers were injured. It was also reported that in the area of Zaitseva, one intelligence officer of the Russian armed forces was killed and another saboteur was seriously wounded. On February 14, the overall picture of the confrontation changed. During the day, Russian-backed militants fired at Ukrainian positions 71 times, but the major part of the armed clashes took place in the Donetsk direction, in particular in the area of Avdiivka. In 20 cases of the ceasefire violation, international observers unambiguously recorded the use of mortars that was prohibited in accordance with the Minsk agreements. In total, more than 160 shells and mines were fired at Ukrainian positions. In several cases, the regiments of the Ukrainian artillery forces moved from the areas of the withdrawal of weapons to wage a counter-battery fight. Here again we remind that the reciprocal firing is governed by the military regulations and it cannot be prohibited by any peace agreements. In simple words, if a soldier's life is in danger, then he has every right to use personal weapons without asking the commander's permission. However, in the case of artillery, the situation is much more complicated. The fact is that the larger the caliber of a weapon is, the higher is the rank of the officer who authorizes its use. At the same time, given a combat order, the same officer is also responsible for the results of the shooting. On February 15, the situation deteriorated significantly. In total, more than 200 shells were fired at Ukrainian positions. In fact, every third shelling was executed with the use of heavy weapons. In the area of Zaitseva, Mayorsk, in addition to mortars, the militants used 2C1 Hvozdika self-propelled artillery. 
The situation in the area of Novhorodsky, Marinka, Krasnohorovka and Pavlopil was also aggravated. In the area of the Donetsk International Airport, battles were fought around the clock, although due to the small distance between the positions, heavy weapons were not used. In all cases, the militants used standard tactics, hiding from the OSCE observers in the evening twilight at about 5 p.m. The militants intensified and conducted heavy firing attacks over the next two to three hours. At the same time, taking advantage of such covering fire in the area of Novotroitske, a sabotage group of militants attacked a Ukrainian stronghold, which resulted in the death of two soldiers of the 72nd Brigade. Another soldier was killed as a result of shelling and six soldiers were seriously wounded. The losses of the Russian-backed militants could not be precisely determined, though five militants were killed and two paratroopers of the 331st Regiment of the 98th Division of the Airborne Forces of the Russian Federation were injured in the area of Svitlodarsk Balch on February 15th. On the same day, three zinc coffins with the bodies of Russian soldiers killed in Zaitseve the day before were sent to Russia from the morgue of Horlivka. On February 16th, the tension continued in the area of Krimske, where terrorists used mortars. The same situation was observed in the areas of Marinka, Krasnohorivka, Chermalik and Lebedinske. In total, more than six mortar shells were fired every day at positions of the Ukrainian military forces. On the same day, a train transporting artillery, ammunition, fuels and lubricants arrived from Russia to the Makivka railway station. Five armored combat vehicles, two Grad multiple rocket launchers and two tankers were sent to the village of Kumachove in the Starobasheva district Donetsk Oblast. After a few hours, the observers noticed the use of a Grad multiple rocket launcher near the Donetsk International Airport for the first time in several months. Having located a fighting vehicle in the territory of the village of Star Mihailovka, the terrorists fired approximately 20 rockets in the direction of Avdivka. On February 17th, several cases of the use of mortars and barreled artillery were observed in the area of Horlivka and on the western outskirts of Donetsk. That forced ATO forces to move the artillery units from the withdrawal zone and carry out counter-battery work. In the area of the village of Piski, during the clearance of the territory, a soldier of the 93rd Brigade was blown up by an unknown explosive device and died on the spot. His brother-in-arms was seriously injured and despite the efforts of doctors, he died the following day in a hospital in the town of Selidove. At the same time, the intensity of the shelling slightly decreased along the entire front line, but once again became more active. This relative calm can be explained by the fact that enemy military regiments were actively rotated on the territory of the Russian-backed forces. Two squadrons of Russian soldiers arrived to the city of Antracit. A train transporting fuel and lubricants was sent to the area of the village of Mihailovka, Perevalsk district of Luhansk Oblast. Several wagons with spare parts for tanks and foodstuff arrived to the town of Hartsysk. It is important to understand that at the moment of loading and unloading, troops are especially prone to attacks. This fact was proven on more than one occasion in the winter of 2015, when the Ukrainian Tochka U missile systems inflicted losses to the interventionists precisely during the process of unloading the trains. The Russian troops conducted active air reconnaissance especially to ensure the security of the unloading of the trains. So on February 17th, in the area of the ATO zone, Three flights of unmanned reconnaissance scouts of the Russian Federation were recorded, two in the direction of Mariupol and another one in the outskirts of the village of Chervona Talakivka, Stanitsa Luhanska district, Luhanska Oblast. On February 18th, the tendency towards a decrease in the tension continued, which was also facilitated by the maintaining of the active and sometimes even aggressive defense on the part of the Ukrainian troops. So, in an attempt at firing at Ukrainian positions in the area of Popasna, the Russian-backed militants were able to fire only one shot, after which the activities of the aggressors were immediately and promptly suppressed. And despite the fact that combat with the use of small arms took place literally along the entire front line, Marinka became the epicenter of the hostilities. There, newly arrived soldiers became acquainted with the front, 
conducting massive shelling by using small arms and grenade launchers, firing from armored vehicles and an automatic machine gun ZU-23 and mortars. So, in fact, the Battle of Marinka only lasted for a short period of slightly more than seven hours. On February 18th, four trucks transporting humanitarian aid from the charitable organizations and the International Red Cross Committee crossed through the Novotroitsky checkpoint and entered the occupied territory. The humanitarian convoy arrived to Ukraine on the same day for the first time in the year 2016. It was the 49th humanitarian convoy from Russia. Representatives of the Russian Federation assured that all these trucks were assigned to deliver canned food, flour, sugar, cereals, as well as educational literature and technical equipment especially to fight fires. And despite the fact that no one saw the exact list of the goods, it is difficult to convict the Minister of Emergencies of Russia of lying. Military apparel and weapons were transported through the occupied territory for several years without any disguise. On the very same day, six tractor trailers that were transporting T-72 tanks arrived in Horlivka. Three armored personnel carriers, four tanks, three great multiple rocket launchers, two self-propelled gun mounts and two trucks with guns and trailers were transported to Snizhna. Twelve combat armored vehicles and 30 trucks arrived at the positions of militants to the south of Shastya in the Luhansk Oblast. The Russians brought eight trucks with militants, three guns and two tankers to Metalist. It is worth reminder that already in 2015 the first and second corps of the so-called Army of Novorossiya joined the organizational structure of the Southern Military District of the Russian Federation. Needless to say, this means that the supply of these Russian military units was carried out on an ongoing basis. On February 19th, a ceasefire was once again observed in the Luhansk Oblast. At the same time, low-intensity warfare was conducted in the vicinity of town of Horlivka and the city of Donetsk. At the same time, in the area of Marinka and Krasnohorivka, the battles lasted for more than six hours, and the use of mortars and infantry fighting vehicles was registered. As a result of sniper fire, a soldier of the 14th Brigade was killed. Over the course of one day, Russian-backed militants fired at Ukrainian military positions using around 50 mortar shells. In the battles for the Avdiivka industrial zone, four Ukrainian soldiers were injured. Three unmanned flying vehicles were observed in the direction of Mariupol and in the area of Hordivka in the Krasnoyarsk district in the Donetsk Oblast. The Russian-backed militants attacked an ammunition depot, throwing phosphorus burning grenades, but the main source of the fire was localized. The next day after these battles was relatively calm, but peace has not been achieved and the war rages on. The hostilities continued absolutely in all the hot spots of the anti-terrorist operation zone. And although the intensity of the use of heavy weapons significantly decreased, a soldier of the 72nd Brigade was killed by a sniper bullet in the area of Starohnatyvka. In the direction of Mariupol, the reconnaissance group of Russian-backed militants was terminated in the battle. The remarkable fact is that all these fighters turned out to be Russian soldiers. Five of them suffered from wounds of varying severity, and three of them, Leonid Nikitin, Igor Sidorov and Vasily Petrochenko, were killed. As a result, the conquerors were returned home in body bags, killed in action, without any words of glory and references to this tragedy in the mass media. On the same day, on February 20th, 2016, four Ukrainian soldiers returned home. Fortunately, they were rescued from the captivity of the Russian-backed militants, where everyone spent more than a year. Commenting on their current situation, the authorized representative of the president of Ukraine, Irina Hiroshenko, said that the process of prisoners' exchange has moved off the ground after a four-month hiatus and some progress is expected in this matter in the nearest future. As of the end of February 2016, 134 Ukrainian soldiers were held captive by the Russian-backed militants. Unlike its eastern neighbor, Ukraine remembers its heroes of this terrible war, both the dead and the living.